the first thing I'm gonna do is show you very briefly the materials that I'm gonna use. I have jumbo compressed charcoal. You can get all of these at your local art store. I have a willow charcoal. Um, stuck to the sticky eraser. Very ASMR, the music. I will say charcoal kind of skeeps me out. I think I have to mentally overcome the texture. If but it's worth it, you know, for art I'll do anything. Almost anything. But look, this the charcoal willow charcoal is very breakable. Very hollow. As you can see. And yeah. So this one I will show you the difference between the way they look, but this is essentially thinner, lighter, less compressed. This is gonna get you those really dark darks. And I think it's similar to, I'm not going to break this out until later. Then I have um, white and brown charcoal. This is for other shades. I have yellow charcoal somewhere over there as well. But I'm going to save the yellow charcoal for later. Later, 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 later. And honestly, be careful with the white because white can get really exciting and before you know it, it has dominated your painting or your uh, charcoal drawing, so be careful. But I, I have found that learning how to draw still lifes in charcoal or chalk pastel or one of those loose, dry mediums is a great middle step from drawing the painting. So if you're looking for that little step between drawing and painting, this is the way to go. These are also more compressed and, um, yeah. Alright. You might notice that I use the um, term painting and drawing intermittently at times. You may not see every detail at the moment, but that's okay because I will Right now, I would rather you focus on making mental connections about my thought process, especially if this is something that you want to do on your own. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, enjoy the experience. Okay. So, we're dealing with reflections. We're dealing with the light source, which is coming up from the right. So these are things that I'm taking note of. I'm also looking at the big shapes, the big picture. I'm looking at placement of where things line up. What is closer to me? What is further away from me? I'm looking at proportions the size of things. So those are the things I'm looking at right now. I'm gonna turn off my phone. I'm watching Twitch, so yeah. I have to be careful to not watch too much internet. <laughs> Obviously, this is a super colorful still life. But right now, we're not going to focus on color because there's so much to di digest when we're drawing something or painting something. So we're going to do one bite at a time, focusing on the bones. We're going to focus on the bones of the structures. Imagine you're stripping away the layers of colors. 
you're stripping away all of the different things that the strip away the details look at the big shapes pretend you're sculpting it right so this is the mind frame and we're, we're going to use big loose motions I also am going to be holding on this very loosely and I'm not going to be too attached to anything that I put onto my paper okay so if you had a still like a larger still life I would ask you to zoom in to the still life and I could technically do that and that's probably a more compelling maybe not more compelling but that's a pretty compelling way to go about it like if it felt too overwhelming zoom in but to me I'm ready to take on this challenge of more information and there's basic lessons in this which I'm excited to share with you all right no, it's okay hey stay here Nova it's all right it's okay It's okay, no. Shh. Oh, it's all right. She's sad because her daddy's at work. And it makes her miss him and she feels lonely and she whines. And it makes me feel bad, but... <sighs> what can I do? Really? Daddy gonna be home later. Yeah. The top of it is an oval shape, right? And then it comes down. And this is in the upper right hand corner. This is a plant that I'm drawing, so I'm just focused on the overall vibe, which is like long and spiky. Shape, 
where does the handle hit the top of my plant? See, I'm, I moved down part of my plant. My I moved, I'm moving things as I go. Okay, that's super important. Keep that in mind. Moving things as, as you go. important to see things and how they line up. Pretend everything's on a grid. I put my hand through it and move everything around. Because right now we're just kind of forming it with clay. Pretend it's this clay mound that you have to go in and deconstruct and put together multiple times. All right, here's the other. Now I am putting the jar in again, more ovals. Now I'm gonna, I'm not focusing on one thing at a time. Notice that I'm plotting everything in at once. You have to mentally let go of control to do this. I get it. I know how hard it is to see something and realize it's not where you want it to be, but that is the entire process of drawing and painting until it's complete. That, those things that you want to change, add, shift is your indication of what your next step is. You are painting, drawing, whatever it will speak to you. Don't resist what it has to say. Listen. If you don't know, <laughs> if not, you will know. By the, done, by the time we're done, like you'll be my guinea pig. I'll see if I can teach you something through this and through my art lessons. And you can let me know if it's helping, you know? <laughs> I'll listen to your feedback. Okay. So yes, there's the little plate underneath. Constantly look at your subject matter. Don't look away. Don't look at your drawing. Look at your subject matter because everything you need to know is right in front of you. It's not here. Okay. The bottle in the back is obscured by a couple of objects, the feather, as well as the spout of the teapot. So make sure you line it up to where the correct thing is kind of overlapping in the right spot. Okay? Also, you have to use a little bit of perspective knowledge. I will give you simple uh, exercises that really will help in the long run. I think that will have to be a separate session, but it, they're exercises to help you understand negative and positive space, perspective, some of the basic rules of drawing, but this is a great start. Really, you learn how to draw by drawing. There's some perspective happening in the bottle. I've always loved bottles. I think they're beautiful. Medicine bottles, any kind of bottle. Now I went into the fabric. So I'm not isolating myself to one object at a time because everything is connected. Remember. I'm, some of the folds are coming off of the base, which I'm okay with, but I'm taking note of where everything kind of sits on my space, on my space. <laughs> I'm making sure everything is placed in the right spot. It's super important, super important. Okay, so, it's starting to 
doesn't look like a lot of mishmash. Nothing's really sticking out as anything, but that's okay. We want it to be like that right now. I'm now checking the width by going side to side. Most artists just draw up and down. Make sure you do side to side. I'm telling you, we don't naturally draw side to side. You have to teach yourself and force yourself to draw side to side. You don't have to teach a kid to draw up and down, but you have to teach a kid to draw side to side. So you can see, as I expanded this, I had to move my cup over. you need to paint anything or draw anything and you have to think of the drawing as the bones of the painting but there's a part in the drawing where you paint towards the end or there's parts of it that feel like painting and then same with drawing there's or painting there's parts of painting that feels like drawing so they are very closely related. Keep that in mind. If you work on one, it will undoubtedly inform the other. So the feather is white, which I love because later whenever I add the white turquoise in, it will be amazing. If you're just using black, obviously you're not going to be able to get that effect, but like anything that's light or highlighted, I'll be using the white charcoal for later. So this is my little shell. I'm plotting in all of that. I'm plotting in where it is on my page using marks. I'm not trying to make everything perfect right now. That will come later because once you decide where everything needs to go, then you can make it more perfect. But you have to first construct it on the space you have in front of you. This is super important. is still life. Sometimes it just speaks to you and you just love it. Now, I will say, there are still lives that are not so good, but it shows the voice of the artist. There are so many ways you can do a still life and you become, you become a different artist by engaging in a slowed down activity. Something less flashy. You know, a lot of my AI generated artwork, it's a lot about the imagery still lives kind of take away imagery, right? And I say AI generated artwork because I use our AI to inform my references. Like I'll, I'll create an AI generated reference and then I'll use that for my paintings. And I will show you what I'm working on later, I'm working on a few things at once. But something like this, you're stripping away the image, you're 
focusing on the how how it's painted. You're focusing on the use of color, the placement, how well someone celebrates the medium. Okay, so this is not a painting, it's a drawing, but same things. Same thing applies. Because you can still celebrate the medium of charcoal and just kind of express yourself through the charcoal. Okay? Trust me, and I'll, I hopefully I can show you how. Okay. This is a, honestly a great start. Now, I know you're what you're thinking. You're like, that looks like shit. <laughs> Maybe you're thinking I can never do that. Regardless, um, everyone's drawings start out looking questionable. You have to believe in your piece enough to continue. You have to have vision. You have to believe without seeing. But once you see it in here or there, right? Like once you see, once you catch the vision, you can make it possible. So anything is possible. You just have to give it the time it deserves. You can't expect it to look amazing right away. Here I'm starting to indicate a few more details in terms of just placement of where certain key things would be. I'm more so adding like points of different uh, places that will trigger my memory of like where it is. I'm essentially mapping it all out. And this is something that will save you so much heartache if you can take your time during this process. Now I'm trying to draw. I, I don't know if trying to is the word I'm going for. I am beginning to draw the stripes in the blanket. Obviously, the blanket has folds as well as a pattern, so there's different stripes going different directions. I like things like that. It's gonna create an interesting illusion. Same with the reflection. We're not gonna forget about the reflections. Um, the reflections are still very much a part of this drawing. We're gonna actually indicate some of the reflections right now, while I'm thinking of it, by just making little marks that remind me, okay, it goes past just the surface, there's a reflection. Reflections are a great way to make a painting more dynamic, especially still life. Now this doesn't isn't gonna have color, but we're still gonna try to bring something out of it. And maybe I will do this one in color, maybe I'll move on to something else. We'll just see. Okay. The, the next thing I'm gonna do is go in really confidently with my darks. Now that I have certain things plotted out and it kind of makes sense to me where everything is, I'm going to go in with my dark. Uh, well, I'm going to stay with this uh, willow vine charcoal. What is it? Is it willow or vine? Let's go up to It's willow. Okay. It's willow charcoal. Alright, so I'm gonna go and I'm start I'm gonna start articulating more information. I'm gonna look deeper. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I, I'm gonna still keep my pace of drawing pretty upbeat though, so I can move through it without hyper focusing on any details too much. Okay? I'm going in 
you're basically making another pass through the entire thing, keeping in mind the information that I already know, but also shifting, adjusting, and adding more information to my drawing. because the willow charcoal is very movable and adding it back in where I want to so I'm literally just shifting it I'm realizing that my little uh, tipped over bottle is in the slightly wrong place too some more obvious points. I'm shifting my bottle over just a little bit. specific to set in stone this early on so the loose open in like if it's a little less specified a little messier that's gonna actually save you because if it's open you're open to shifting it moving it and you can see that in the painting or drawing and that's important to have that quality throughout the entire painting until it's completely done because I'm telling you throughout the entire painting you're going to make or drawing you're going to make these mental connections that you're like you'll draw one thing and it sets something else in place around it and then you'll realize oh gosh I have to move that be open to moving it it's better to move it to shift it than to just leave it there incorrectly because if something isn't quite right it's going to mess up the entire thing so you're, you're aiming for accuracy. Your interpretation of what the accuracy, like which is the placement, things like that, is where the creativity is. But you have to have the tools to make it look right, and that's what I'm trying to give you. So 
I'm, I'm drawing in the spout. Using that side to side mark making and adding a little bit of a shadow in here. Because this is round, right, I am shading, so if something goes away from you and it's round, the part that's further away from you is darker, the part that's closer to you is lighter. And there's a shadow, because the light is coming from the right, the shadow is going to be cast to the left. and drawing in between things, not just the edges of things. are kind of running off of the image, which is fine. I'm going to draw the shadow on my cup. This side is a lot darker, it seems like, than the other side. There's definitely a dark, hot shadow underneath, or cool shadow. very prominent so creating that shadow gives it the adding the shadows and things like that create the shape the roundness effect there's the feather in front of it which we cannot forget Inside the cup is dark, so I'm just gonna fill that in. I'm gonna go through and just fill in some of the dark spots, okay? That's gonna help ground this entire image, alright? So I'm gonna go through and do it really quickly. So watch, watch, watch and learn. is shading. I'm just looking at the shapes of the shadows and confidently putting them in, trying to recognize and replicate the nuances of what's happening here. Tricky. 
it's pretty dark over here because it's in the shadow. We'll leave it like that for now. Okay, going in here, making it darker, using the side, using the side of my charcoal to block some shapes in. You don't totally need to know what you're doing as you're doing it. Just do it. <laughs> Trust your hand, I guess. And the process. Interestingly enough, the details come in, in the simplification. So if you can simplify it well, you've done your job. Alright, so I've blocked in more shapes, which I'm happy with. I'm going to try to keep some of the highlights. Not really sure where that ends or begins, but you can see you can move it around. Um, I'm realizing the cups are probably bigger than that. They are shaded pretty well. There's definitely a reflection. The rim of the cups really indicate the shapes. As you can see, just adding that rim. And, and the roundness and I'm drawing like I'm trying to replicate the shape and kind of move my charcoal in the direction of the actual thing like if, as though I was putting my hand on it the best way I can explain it again focusing on just finding those dark places and pulling out the shadows and those hard lines. For the hard lines, I'm using the tip. For the shadows, the side. Again, this here where it's rounded needs to be darker. And there is a highlight right there, which I will get to later with my other charcoal. Even though I do have a relatively long, uh, strong light source, it's 
the shadows aren't as crazy as um, some forms of light. This light happens to be a, a bit more diffused, which causes it to look softer rather than just hard shadow lines. The perspective of this bottle is tripping me up for sure. And that's all right, I admit it. Um, adding a little bit of the blanket stripey detail back here. detail out on the sides. I'm going to leave a lot of the detail in the center. That's just going to be a personal choice, personal preference. Okay. This is looking good. give me some medium values. See how cool that looks? It pulls it out. It's a lighter value without being the lightest value. And when I mean light value, another word for value is like, the value is a lightness or darkness of a color. The lightest, the lightness or darkness of the color. So how light or dark in, in a good drawing or painting, there's usually six different values minimum and something more complex you can have like 30 40 different values it's crazy how how many values something can have all right so we're going in here adding another value adding more values in, which is the lightness or darkness is gonna start bringing it to life this is where it gets more exciting Confident spots can really 
pull the whole thing together. Places where you kind of, yeah, I think just confident mark making is the best way to put it. It's a little challenging to explain, but you know, you, you as you go, as your drawing develops, you want it to be a little bit more decided in some places, maybe not all throughout. So decided meaning maybe more tight, more um, articulated, less open for interpretation, a little bit more definite or specific. Not everywhere, but if you do it in a few places, it really, really helps. If you're not careful, you'll make everything super, super decided and specific, and then that takes away some of the magic and the creativity. So be aware of that. You want it to be a balance of creativity and your interpretation as well as everything else, the, your knowledge in drawing and whatnot. Oh yeah, this is the jar lid. See drawing just through the jar. I'm not drawing a lot of outlines. I have to kind of steady my easel. I'm drawing really just like through everything. Okay, that looks good. Um, maybe I can Make the blanket look more striped. Got my nose edges. Okay. Yeah, just make it more striped by blocking out some of these different parts in the painting or the drawing. I keep doing that. This is looking really good. Okay, I feel like I have charcoal on my face and on my glasses and oh my God. Oh, that's the bad thing about charcoal. All right, let's see. The next step, I think, would be to, how long have I been drawing? I don't know. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is Use my compressed charcoal. As well as, so this is my compressed black charcoal and then like a brown charcoal. So you're gonna see what a huge difference this makes. It's crazy. All right, I'm gonna do even darker darks with this, even more decided outlining, but not full on outlining, just certain places where you might need a little help. The place I'm not gonna outline, I'm, I'm shading still, I'm deepening the drawing, I'm looking for those darker places, looking for the places that need to be filled in, and I'm using my mark making with this instead of the willow charcoal. 
Using mixed medium is always great too. You don't have to stick with charcoal, but pushing what you can do with one medium is, you'll learn a lot. We'll just say that. Again, stay away from outlining, but if there are certain places that you feel like need a harsh line, put it in there. You can always erase it. Again, finding those few places where it feels really confident and that you know, just kind of go back to that. Some of the information I'm allowing to fade away a little. Focusing more on certain parts, less on other parts. Blending in with my fingers, that's why it's kind of painterly, because paint, you just move it all around, you know what I'm saying? So that stripe is really strong, but I like it. It sets the tone of other stripes that can be equally strong. <laughs> shapes, like kind of the negative space in between and whatnot. That looks good. That grounded it. This definitely needs to be darker on this side of the flower pot. Using the side of your charcoal is really good. It's important. I'm trying not to touch my face. Okay, the last step is adding the white. This is obviously super messy, but it looks awesome. It's really dynamic. You can see kind of what's happening. There's a little bit of abstractness to it. It really helped me understand things. Now, if I wanted to continue to articulate it and work on it, I could. That's what's great about working general to specific, but watch what happens when I add the white. This is capturing the lights, the lightest lights, all right? It's not just the highlights, it's also the shape, 
right? So, and this is why I love gray paper, because only gray paper or just toned paper in general allows you to do this. So the light's coming from the right, so I'm adding the highlights on the right side of the blades of um, grass. I don't know what this is called. A succulent. And all of a sudden it's starting to have shape. So, already amazing. We're going to do that with the pot. We've got a highlight over here. Again, the lightest parts are going to be on the right side. Don't go too crazy with the white. Keep it mark makey. I'm going to go a different direction here and there just to give it a little bit of interest. Like drawing the direction of the actual object like the little lip is flat so I'm kind of using flat marks in there and all of a sudden it looks really flat like I'll show you another way like so the these little things are rounded so I'm gonna do kind of like curved motion to kind of show off the roundness not on all of it if you do it on a few, your brain fills in the rest. You don't need to do it all over, necessarily. So yeah, that looks good. Um, maybe indicate this one. Just adding a little bit more like side to side of roundness to the plant. Okay. Just gonna touch these with the white. Just to show the reflectiveness. The top of this cork is very bright. So I'm just going to add that shape in there. Why not? Um, I'm just not going to see you couldn't see it, but there it is. There. Hopefully that's a little bit more centered. Alright, so a highlight on the lip of this cup as well. And a few highlights here. softer. Okay, yeah. Definitely bright right here. Super bright. And over on this side as well. Definitely a highlight right there. Okay, there's definitely a highlight here, kind of on the engravings. And it's not full on highlights, it's just some of the lighter places. There's some texture on my lid. Alright, now there's the handle of my teapot, also really white. We're going to go the other direction, not just the rainbow direction, but the opposite direction, like as if it was coming towards me. There we go, that gives it warm. Bring it down here.
All right, right here is super bright. Also, that's bright too. And I feel like a lot of that is super bright. Staying true to the shape of the pot. There's a little highlight over here at the spout. The top of the spout is also brighter. Bringing it down, fading it in. Okay. Now I'm gonna draw in this is the feather. We couldn't forget about the feather, right? Just gonna add some directional light making over here. There. We don't want to do too much. Okay, and honestly that probably needs to be a little less bright. That looks better. And this could be even more bright for sure. There, way better. This is closer to the light. This is in the shadow. So we've got the feather right here. I am winging it, no pun intended. <laughs> Just kind of imitating this soft, spiky, prickly feeling. Ooh, that technique looks like it works in, out, on the side. That looks super feathery. It's going off the page, which I embrace. and enhance. I mean, I see it, but sometimes you have to kind of just go off of what you think will look good on your drawing. Down at the base of the feather, it's thicker. So I'm going back to the side of my charcoal. some of these details, I feel like it's ready and that the bones are there. And really I could continue doing what I'm doing, just I could continue um, articulating, adding, specifying, but this is how it starts.
I'm just going to make this lighter to separate it from the uh, pot. Do a couple highlights on my um, little bottle back here. You can see some certain things I didn't really work on that much. Certain things I did, but that's what makes it interesting. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done for for this. You know, um, I feel like I could obviously continue working on it, but really it was more of a study than anything. And I also wanted to demonstrate how to get started with charcoal drawing still lives. If you use this method all the way through, you can develop it, make it more realistic. I think instead of developing this one, I might do a painting of a still life similar to this, if not this exact one, and then this is like the study. It's like the, I don't know, it's helping me understand it better for next time. Here's the blanket. I'm going to do this opposite directional type of mark making. That looks really cool. It looks very activated. I feel like the feather could use a little bit of shading. It's alright though. I like it. you do too. I'm going to show you the still life one more time so you can see what I was going off of. That's it, folks. There you have it. I have to wash my hands. I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did. Uh, I will be giving more art lessons and especially if I continue working on this still life, whether it's this one or one similar to it, I think it would be great to show you a start to finish process. Starting out with a charcoal drawing or a sketch is a wonderful way to get to know your subject matter before you go all in on a canvas, paint, supplies, all of that. So yeah, I really like this, I like the way it turned out. I 
been working on that painting for weeks. I finished the process. I can't wait to show you the video um, following the process. It took weeks to complete that painting, so the video also is taking a long time to complete. I can't wait to show it to you. I wanted to give you a sneak peek here. Also, I did this painting. I will show you. I posted a video already of the final stages of that painting. I will be posting clips of the process uh, on Patreon. I recorded exclusive content of that painting process. Alright, anyways, I wanted to say thank you for being here. I hope you liked my drawing. I was looking at this and I realized there were some things that I wanted to fix before I called it finished. There were some things that were bothering me. It shouldn't take long to fix though. Is the fact that this is super bright over here and that thing is way too dark and it's the darkest thing. It's pulling my eye. It doesn't look right. So I'm gonna tone this back down. Just like this. Blending, blending, blending with my fingers. That looks good. It already looks softer back there. I also noticed that this feels like it needed to be a little bit like a solid shape. Yeah. That looks good. Now I'm gonna wipe that away a little and make behind it really dark. Just to push it back even more. Blend, blend, blend with my fingers. That looks more solid. I'm gonna do that here. Blending a little bit. I'm not taking away the mark making, I'm just connecting some things. Using your fingers is a good idea. Don't be afraid. You don't want to flatten it though. beginning and end to all of the uh, different objects, they all connect. These mindsets will take you really far, so just trust me.
This isn't super highlighted because it's in the distance, but there are some highlights in it. Like it's in the shadow, technically, but it's reflective and shiny. perfectly and just kind of leave little notes to yourself and to the viewer. Again, let's make this side brighter. And let's do some side to side mark making side to side horizontal and get some shading in there though as well something look sheer or glass or whatever. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay, we gotta make this shaded though. Even if I don't draw everything perfectly, it's gonna drive me nuts. to everything, but I haven't really dove in into that that much. I mean, I did a little bit of that. That's why I think it would be even better as a painting, because it would really explore reflections even more. That the feather feels like it's actually sitting down, like, and I feel like it needs more substance in the stem. I'm not sure what you call that. I'm gonna highlight it. There. That feels better. You kind of have to spell it out for the viewer sometimes. You can't expect them to know what you see right in front of you. You have to show them what you see. are so fun. Okay. As you can see, I kind of neglected some of these other objects, like the seashell, but I still threw them in there. I kind of neglected these other objects, but it's kind of nice to have 
variation. They still somewhat feel like they're in the same world. It's more like the focus is like towards the center. The focus is more towards the center. Okay. All right, this looks really, really good. I feel better about this. Let me show you from the different camera angle. point I really have to just look at the drawing and not my still life as much because at the end of the day people aren't going to be looking at the still life so I'm just going to look at the drawing and connect a few things for myself and make it make sense back in for sure. I just feel like it needs it. Definitely back here needs to be blocked out even though when I'm looking at it in front of me it doesn't seem um, so black. I feel like it's really important to make sure that it feels separate from the teapot. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of reconstruction of the teapot going in. We don't wanna lose the charm, but there's just a few things that I was like, I could probably fix that make it look just a little bit better. Somehow adding the ground in helps. Blocking it out back there. Seriously, it looks nice. Um, I think I learned something through it too, which is super important. And that's what art, art is all about, is learning. Every time you draw, every time you paint, learn something. All right, cool. For real time. All right, I'm done. Let me 
want you to see it in the high quality camera up close. That's nice, right? 